So now we're going to look at four examples of solving a particular problem and this will demonstrate the speed of each uh, variation of how we solve it. So I'll give you an idea of what we're going to be doing the rest of the class as we look at different solutions for a problem. And we're also going to show you one of the pitfalls of, uh, of, of solving a problem that you have to look out for. So we're going to talk about anagrams. Here's an example of an anagram heart and earth. Uh, and here's another one, python and typhoon. And so what is an anagram? You have two strings and you can take the first string and rearrange it in some way and get the second string. So the second string and the first string have all the same characters and they're just a rearrangement of the uh, the uh, ones from one string to the other. Uh, the strings don't have to be actual English words but usually when you're solving puzzles you'll give you'll be given two words so technically that's an anagram. So we're going to look at different approaches and look at what uh, how much it costs us to do each approach. So the first solution he calls checking off and the idea is that we have two strings so we're going to uh, look at the letter H in the second string and check off if we find it. So when we find it we're going to check it off and we're going to check it off by replacing the H with a none. Now we can't do that in a string because it's immutable, meaning we can't modify anything in the string. So what we're going to do is convert these from strings to list, and lists are not immutable, so we can actually replace the H in the list with none. And so then we go to the E, and then we check off and find the E with uh, the first E we found, and then we find an A, and we go and check that off, and so on. And if we, when we're all done, we've checked everything off here, and we've also finished going through this whole uh, string here, we know it's an anagram. Now we're going to show you two versions, the version the book author did and the version I've done. I've tried to simplify some things so a little easier code to understand. And we're going to take uh, some advantages of things. First of all, if these two strings are not equal, they automatically are not anagrams. So that's what, something we can test immediately and just return if we find that they're not equal. Uh, so let's go ahead and see the author solution. And uh, let me go back and do. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pick the H, and then for this H, you're going to go looking through this string. And then you're going to pick the E, and for the E, you're going to be looking through the string. So, you can see that we're going to have a loop that's going to loop through the first string one at a time, and then an inner loop so that when the first string is on the H, it'll start looping through all the letters of the second string. So that's basically what he does here. So he had he, all of these are going to define an anagram solution with two strings. So he, this is where it converts a string to a list. And this is going to be useful to remember how to do anything that's a string you can convert to a list of individual characters. Um, so he's going to use some variables to keep track of where he is in each list. So position 1 will point to where we are in the uh, S1 list and position 2 will point where we are in the uh, S2 or the A list. Now we only have to add none to the A list so we don't have to uh, convert S1 to a list. And then we have a flag that says it's still OK which means we're still looking for an anagram. And so while position 1 in the first string is less than the length of the string and still OK, they're going to reset the pointer for position uh, 2 in the second string to 0, set found to false. We have another flag we're going to set when we actually find it. And then while position 2 pointing to the second string is less than the length of that list and not found, we're going to check if the, uh, is the string at position 1 equal to the list at position 2. And if it is, we want to uh, set found to true. And when we set found to true, it's going to go back up to the while, and that will cause the loop to terminate early. If it's not equal, then we increment uh, position 2 and look at the next character in the list to see if, if the, what we're looking for from the first list is in the second position, and so on. So this will loop through looking at the second list. Uh, and here's the outer loop, which is looping through the first uh, string. So now, once we've done through all the way through the list, we check found. If we never found what we're looking for, uh, then we s 
well, if we did find what we're looking for, we set the position of where we found it to none. So that's going to mark it or check it off. If we never found it, we set still OK to false. That means we went through uh, this whole list and we never found a particular character. That means it can't be an anagram. So still OK set to false, it's going to cause this outer loop to quit. Uh, and then finally we increment the outer loop, we increment the pointer to where we are in the first string by one and repeat the outer loop. Uh, if the outer loop still OK becomes false or we've run out of string to check, we exit the outer loop and we return still OK. And that's going to return true or false if it's an anagram. Uh, here's a, the way I wrote it. So I'm going to anagram one. So the way I wrote it, first I check if the length of the two strings are not equal, and if it is, I return false. And then I set n equal to, to the length of the first string, and then I make a new list. I call it S2 list, so it's S2 as a list. And then for each character in S1, then for each i in the range of the length of S2, so i will be an index into the second uh, list. Excuse me. So if the character from the first uh, string is equal to the ith position of the second list, then we mark it off. And then we uh, decrement n by 1. So n is keeping track of, uh, it started out with the length of the second string. And so every time we subtract it, we're marking off. If we marked off everything in the second string, we know we're done and we found an anagram. So that's going to be our flag we check uh, when we're all done. So we don't we don't actually have any flags. Uh, but if we actually found the character we can break out of the loop. So break you remember is a special keyword in Python that works just like in Java and C++ which will break out of the inner loop and go to the next character of the outer loop. So once we've gone through all the characters of the outer loop uh, then we just return, if n is 0, it's an anagram, so it checks return n equals 0. If it's not 0, we didn't check everything off, and so it's not an anagram. Now we're going to see more of this. This is testing. So what I did is I made a tuple of tuples. These are called the test cases. So each tuple that's inside it has a whole list of tuples. There are three things in each tuple. There's the word to check and the first string, the second string, and what we should expect it to be. So this is actually two anagrams. These are anagrams. Uh, ABC with an empty string is not an anagram. Two empty strings, we're going to uh, test if they're true. Now this particular case, it turns out the author's, uh, I think the author's example fails at it, or it fails at one of these where you have an empty string. Uh, so you don't have to have this work all the time for empty strings. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, but it does work on ours because we test if the strings are equal and we check if n is 0 at the end, so it will be. So this will return true. Uh, and then we have a bunch of other test cases. And so what we do is we loop through, and this is a special uh, way of looping through a tuple. So we have this as a list of tuples so each particular piece of this is a tuple, and so we're using that assignment where you can list three variables on the left. So inside the tuple, S1, S2, and E will be assigned to these three things in order. So this is a neat way of using a for loop, I'm going to point out. And then we're using the assert statement. And what the assert statement does in Python is it's always assert and then something that's true or false, and then you can have optionally a string. So I have a formatted string here, which is a, like an error message. So our search, you can add a bunch of certs, and if your program is, if all these assertions of this are true, a cert doesn't do anything. It won't print anything, it doesn't stop your program. So this is a lot of times how you'll test a program, and we'll see this when you do fraction. Uh, that when you did fraction in the previous chapter, we used the certs. So if uh, the anagram solution is equal to what is expected, the E, that's what it's asserting. If it's not, it, it will output an error message, quit the program, and the error message is basically outputting what the two strings returned were, so you know uh, what data failed the test. 
So let's talk a little bit about big O of this. Because we're, we're stepping through every character of the first string, and then we have another loop that is stepping sequentially through every character of the second string in a list, uh, this is two nested for loops. This one's going from one to n, and this is going to one n, where the n is the size of the problem. So I put little notes here. This is if you counted how many assignments. There's one assignment here. There's one assignment to uh, make a new list. You could argue that's actually an n operation. Uh, then there's n squared, n squared assignment. Uh, this one's zero to n. It depends on how far it checks, uh, how far it gets in the list. Then we have n squared here, and these are all n squared because they're inside of the nested loop. And then there's one assignment when we're all done, and I didn't even count that. So this, this I put a little notation as to what polynomial all of this adds up to. But the main thing you'll see is the biggest term. I use up caret for power of. So uh, we have, if we simplify this, it's 2n squared plus n plus 2. So the pre predominant term is n squared, so this is O of n squared.